All right, I'm back on the boat here again, and uh, we've been doing uh, some strip plank, and we've got quite a bit of it on already. I think it looks fantastic. It's coming out really, really nice, and uh, I'm kind of proud of the way we designed the system here. You know, it's not unlike other strip planking. It's not fastened to each other. You know, uh, it's only glued to each other. So we didn't nail it or edge nail it to each other. And it really is no need to with this glue. It just it holds it in place fantastic. It's got a lot of framing in this boat, a lot. So, you know, if this is the only layer of plank in this boat ever saw, it would be uh, substantial enough to, to do the trick. But we're gonna put another layer of planking right over it. That's gonna be Carvel planking. And uh, this whole system is just a little bit different than what's going on. Many, many boats have been double planked. They've been double planked in every which way. Double diagonal, you know, double Carvel plank in all kinds of which ways. And uh, this, as far as I know, is the second boat that, uh, at least the one that, the only ones I've had involvement with that are strip planked on the first layer and then Carvel planked over it. And the Carvel planking is, uh, the way it goes on, the way the Carvel planking goes on, it's slightly biased to this strip planking. So uh, I think that really, really makes a strong hull. Uh, it's been proven already. Uh, the the, the uh, Trumpy Yacht Freedom was strip planked by a crew that I ran and Carvel planked over it. Fantastic uh, success. So that's what we're doing here. So I'm gonna, today I wanna show you just how easy this is to go about. Now we're not gonna, you know, be covering a ton of ground, but I've got everything right in front of me right here. I'm just gonna show you a few little tricks and a few little things on, on, uh, that make it easy to do. So uh, one of the first things we're gonna do is uh, remove this rib end right here. So you know, it's kind of in the way we've planked up close to it. And uh, at this point, I can't get any clamps in between or anything else. So it's time to take this rib band off. It's not doing anything at this point. This rib band is, uh, you know, sparing up the frames and all the rib bands from there up. So this one is just time to remove it. So what I'm gonna do is just take a clamp and clamp it to this frame right here, just to hold it there so that I don't have to have help to do it and take my screwdriver and uh, the way we've got these fastened to the molds here is with these construction screws they really do the trick that takes care of that I'm going to take this clamp off and rehang my clamp up above me there, and that removes the rib end. So there, that's out of the way. Like I said, we've got a lot more rib bands on this boat than you would normally see, but I think it's fantastic because it holds the frames really nice and fair. And uh, that's one of the things about the rib bands. The rib bands are also fairly heavy and uh, and that was nice because we wanted to make sure that if we could edge set the rib bands in place, then we could edge set the planking in place. So, uh, I mean, the rib bands are like two and a half inches wide. You know, they're fairly heavy, especially these bottom ones right here. To a professional eye, maybe the rib bands aren't on in the direction that they should be. But for our purposes, it works out perfectly because what we've done is we've put the rib bands on congruent with the shear or parallel to the shear, or equidistant from the shear, all the same thing, you know what I mean? So the idea is, is that they would, the rib bands would parallel the strip planking. The strip planking is congruent, parallel, or uh, equidistant from the shear. And uh, the, the, uh, the planking that we put over the top of it will not be put on that way, so that it'll be slightly biased to this. The first thing I'm gonna do is take a little template, just a little piece of three quarter, or a piece of quarter inch plywood, and uh, step up and put it in place as if it's a strip plank. And I am going to scribe it a little bit with a pencil and take it down. And I'm just going to stand right here. I don't need to have it against a bench or anything. I'm just going to do it right here in midair with a block plane. And I may have to do this a couple of times real quick, like, just to get it to, to look just right. Now I'm going to step back up. 
And like I said, I'll give it a couple of more swipes. Test it again. Perfect. I'll just put that, line that up at the bottom of the strip, like so. I'm going to pick up a saber saw and cut it right here in position now. It's pretty nice to have all the tools that you need right here on a platform in front of you because that way you don't have to lean over and pick things up and reach too far and wear yourself out. I kind of like to set myself up kind of nice so that makes it easy for me. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a saber saw. So, put our saber saw back, and then I'm going to give it a quick cleaning, and I haven't taken much off of it or changed the angle of it at all. Now, it's pretty good, but I could touch it up just a tiny bit more. I'll set it right here. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back corner just a little bit, a couple little swipes off of it like that. Test it one more time. Oh my goodness, that fits perfect, just like that. So, I'm going to clamp it in place here. Uh, the idea of this is so that I have it exactly where it belongs so that I can get a lint on it and mark it on the other end for the scarf. Now we're going to come all the way back here and I am going to mark, where would you like it? Right here. I'm going to mark it right here on the edge of this frame, right here. Like that. Now, the next thing to do before we even take that down is to take a square. And I'm going to square that mark all the way around. That's the way there's less confusion about how we saw it when we go to saw it. So, now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark, yeah, Ken's just done it. We mark the angle on it that the scarf is going to be. That helps us when we get to the bandsaw so that we know that we don't cut it that wrong angle and have it backwards or anything else. And we've done all that already, so we know not to do that. So, there we go. We've got it marked for length. We're going to take it back down and cut that scarf in the bandsaw. Now, I'm just going to rehang my clamps up the top. We're going to go this way with it here. A lot of strip plank boats that I've seen in the past, you know, they were just really butted on the frames with a nice square butt like that. And as a matter of fact, they would drill a hole right down through the middle of the butt and put a nail in there. So they're not scarfed together whatsoever. And that would be on a boat that's single planked. You know, and I've seen many, many single plank, strip plank boats built that way. Well, we've made quite an improvement on that because we're scoffing the planks together. And uh, these uh, strip planks we're putting on are five-eighths of an inch thick by an inch and three-quarters wide. And uh, it's got a six-to-one scoff in it. Now, you know, many, many people have said that, uh, you know, you need to have a 12-to-one scoff in many situations and different things like that. Well, you know, I, I, I tend to agree with that. Depends on what you're doing. The six to one is plenty for a situation like this, I would say, because they're under very, very little, you know, uh, 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 stress as far as trying to come apart. They're not under any edge set stress, you know, to, to stress the glue line in this direction. They're under very little stress in this direction here, none whatsoever really. It's got a plank going right by it on both sides glued, and to make a 12 to one scarf would just be pretty much a waste of material and a little bit harder to do and uh, there just isn't any need for it. We're going to take some packaging tape and put some packaging tape on the molds here because the last thing in the world we would want to do would be to glue the strip planking onto the molds because if we did that then when we went to take the molds out we'd have to take a sledgehammer to them and beat them to death. And the idea is that when we do take the molds out, we're going to make these molds available 
to the rest of the world in case somebody would like to buy the molds and build another one of these 43 foot Alden 270 series schooners. Quite normally when you plank a boat like this you would fasten the planking to the molds. Well we may have to do that at some point but this first layer is cooperating so well that we haven't even put one screw at this point from the planking into the molds and uh, you know like I said if you do that especially with a double plank boat you better remember to pull those first screws out on the first layer because otherwise when you plank over it you can't get them out and then when you go to get the molds out like I said you can't get the molds out either so that wouldn't be very good so we try to make sure we don't glue the plank into the mold so I've taped off the molds the next thing for us to do is to mix up some glue and glue it in place we're gonna spread one edge with it uh, just as thin as it mixes then we're gonna thicken it a little bit and spread it on the other surface and then we're gonna mount the plank and put it in place so the thing for us to do here is get started we're gonna use two pumps of glue that's all we're gonna need for this operation so we're gonna mix that up really isn't too much to this done this probably million times in my life maybe something like that <laughs> the next thing for me to do is to grab a brush this is the brush that we're going to use to spread the glue now i find it's impossible to spread the glue with the bristles on the brush that long it's just they're not stiff enough so you can't get any any uh, movement of the glue so what i want to do is shorten the bristles up and you can do it a number of ways you can do it with a pair of scissors do it any way you want but the easiest way to do it is to just set it down on a piece of hardwood like so and take a chisel and just go right across with a chisel like that now the chisel does have to be quite sharp but that's never a problem for me all my chisels are sharp okay I've cut one brush for myself now I'm gonna cut another one for Ken because he's gonna work at it at the same time that I'm working at it look at that right across in one swipe pretty nice there you go now I am going to mix some cotton fibers into this glue that I've got left here like so mix that in there so we spread some unthickened glue on the surface of the plank that's on the boat and we spread some unthickened glue on the surface of this one where they made up and uh, I think what I'm going to do like we always do is spread a little bit of thickened glue over that layer just to fill the saw texture or whatever might need filling we don't think there's anything but we're going to thicken the glue anyhow just like that honestly this works really well with the bristles cut like this on the brush because if you didn't you wouldn't be able to move this glue at all and you just struggle so it's not something I've seen anybody else do but uh, I don't know how they get away with it I can't do it <laughs> I have to shorten the bristles like this in order to spread thickened glue there you go we spread the glue I'm gonna set that aside and then I've got a little caulking gun here with polysulfide in it and I am going to pump some rows right in place right there now the planks only an inch and three quarter wide so I think that's probably a little beyond where I need to go I'm gonna put one little bead in the rabbit so now that we've got the glue spread what we're going to do is just pick the plank up and put it in place and clamp it in place and uh, and screw it down to the plastic frames and like I said we're not going to fasten it to the molds at all and uh, I just want to make sure I'm going to look down here and make sure we put the glue on the right side of it we've made that mistake before that's embarrassing we don't like doing that but yeah I think we've done it properly so let's put it right up in place and I'm going to put it just a little higher than it needs to be spread that polysulfide downhill a little tiny bit like that now I'm going to take a clamp clamp it right here to this frame right here 
So I'm going to take five inch clamps and just go right down and clamp the plank against the frames. Now you don't need an awful lot of pressure. It's just to hold it in place. That's all it's doing. So Ken's going to clamp up the stern end of that plank. And the next thing I want to show you is the way that we're holding these strip planks tight against the plank below it. And that's with these bar clamps here. Now these things work great. Bar clamps normally just pull together. You know, they pull things together. But these bar clamps are designed to do both. You can either pull things together or you can spread things apart. So the, the rib bands really work to in our favor. Yeah, now it's nice and tight in the rabbit. There's polysulfide squeezing out everywhere. It's nice and tight against the other plank. We are set up pretty nicely here. And at this point, we're going to start drilling some holes and putting some screws in. We're actually not going to counter sink them into the wood. What we're going to do is just use the uh, screw itself in order to pull it in. So one screw in the end of the strip plank. There's one there. We're going to end up with one right here. Now, we're all set. Now, like I said before, the whole idea of all of this is to make it as simple as possible. And uh, now we're screwing it to the plastic frames. We're using uh, the very center of the frame as a line because we're going to use these screw lines here when we put the next layer of planking on, that screw line is going to tell us exactly where the frame is because we won't be able to see the frames. And we're going to actually put the next layer of planking on. It's going to have the screws staggered, one forward and one aft of this line of screws right here. So this not only holds it up there, but it tells us where to fasten the next layer. You know, there's been every kind of screw head design that you could ever imagine. Square drive, Phillips head, uh, you know, um, uh, um, Fierson, oh my goodness. To me, straight slot is still the very best of all of it. It's the easiest one to drive, it's the easiest one to get out, and if you damage the head, I actually have little tools that recut the slots. And, uh, I don't use much of anything but. So that's the way it's done right there. We can take the clamps off of it right now. And uh, we have completed that task. It's a pretty easy project, really, to do that. Individually, there's nothing hard about doing any of this strip planking. There's nothing hard about the process. There's nothing physically hard about it. It's just a matter of keeping going. Sometimes that's the hardest part of all of this stuff is to decide that, you know, it gets a little bit monotonous or a little bit boring as you go along, especially doing strip planking like this, but uh, it doesn't bother us at all. And uh, we're accomplishing the task. So it's really fun to see the boat going together like this. And uh, I think that uh, this was the proper design work and uh, we just love it.